do you ever wish you'd bought a different flashlight than the one you bought for use in trucking? Hello, I'm Vicki Simons with TruckDriversMoneySavingTips.com. Okay, so uh, my husband and I went to uh, truck driver training school in late 1992, started our uh, professional driving career together as a husband and wife professional driving team, and that was in the winter of 1993. And even as newbies that didn't have a packing list like we share with you on our website now, we did have enough foresight to pack a flashlight with us, but we did not have the foresight to pack extra batteries with us. So when we got caught in our first snowstorm, and, okay, this is a, a confession, okay, we had heard that um, I-80 was going to be closed down because of the um, the bad weather, okay, which it frequently does. Uh, if there's a whiteout conditions, they close that interstate. You can't go anywhere. And if you go around the barricades, you can get fined. It's not very pleasant. We had a load from, I think it was Utah, that was destined to come back east. And the fact of the matter is we um, were going to be crossing I-80, or at least we were hoping to, and there was a report that they may be closing down that interstate. And so uh, we thought, okay, uh, we didn't know too much about the Rocky Mountains at that point in our lives. I uh, had never really studied that because we're both from uh, the, the southeast, okay, uh, where there's not too much snow. But anyway, we thought that because I-70 was a lower-numbered interstate, that the mountains must be uh, lower there. And uh, that being said, okay, we went down to I-70. We started to cross, um, get, get across over there. But the thing about it is, as you know, because I talked about snow chains uh, just not too long ago, okay, uh, we realized that we were going to have to chain up the truck. And it was the only time that we chained up the truck, except it was getting dark, okay. And the fact of the matter was that uh, we needed to have use our flashlight. But the longer that the flashlight ran... The longer the batteries were in use, the dimmer the light got, and, uh, you know, as it's getting darker outside, it's going to be impossible to be able to see. Well, thank God that some uh, kind little angel, uh, another trucker, came along, and he shone his flashlight on where we needed to get our, you know, the chains on the truck uh, long enough for us to chain up all the, the, uh, the tires uh, that needed to be chained up, and uh, we were on our way. But we had a huge learning experience about flashlights. So I'm going to be sharing with you about how not all uh, flashlights are equal. And I'm going to be asking you um, some questions in order to help you choose the flashlight that's right for you. Now, I'm going to show you before I read my little list, okay, um, this is a particular flashlight that we use at home. This was a Rayovac LED. Don't necessarily recommend Rayovac batteries. They can work good. There may be Duracells or other kinds of batteries, but the fact of the matter is, as you um, open this up, okay, you will see that this has a dry cell, a D-sized dry cell, and there are five uh, lights. Now, in years gone by, uh, this kind of flashlight only used to have one bulb, and I'm going to be talking about bulbs uh, sometime uh, a little bit later. Okay, this is a very small uh, flashlight in comparison. I'm using rechargeable batteries in this one. Okay, in that one, I've never yet found a C or a D rechargeable battery. Okay, they have things that will um, go over the top of a, a, you know, like a double D or a triple D uh, battery. But anyway, this one has three, six, nine, this one has nine um, LED uh, uh, lights. Okay, that uh, in case one goes out, then uh, you have eight as a backup there, and I'll be talking about that. And also, this, you see this one's very well weathered. Okay, this is a little pen light, ever ready. Okay, and uh, it's got that little click. I use this, I keep this one in my belly pouch. Okay, just in case I ever need it to, say, find a keyhole. Okay, something like that. Now, when my husband was doing his flatbed work, during the time that he was doing flatbedding, okay, when he was going in early in the morning and needed to be able to see stuff, he would um, do his pre-trips and stuff by the light of his cell phone. Okay, there are some uh, cell phones, smartphones that have that flashlight capability. You could go up to the Google App Store and probably the iTunes Store as well and find yourself an app. And there's a little light 
bulb, if you will, on the back side of a lot of these smartphones, and you could basically just use that. In fact, the other night, when my husband and I were coming back home from a meeting, I literally used the flashlight on the back of my smartphone in order to be able to walk our dog and bring him into the house for a meal. So uh, I didn't use a separate flashlight. I used my cell phone flashlight. Okay, so I'm going to read to you the questions here, how to choose the best flashlight. And these may help you determine which one to use. Okay, so how much light do you need? Okay, in terms of lumens, how bright does it does it need to be? How big of an area do you need to light? Okay, so for example, do you only need to read a map book or do you need to light the way before you as you're walking in an unlighted area? Uh, how do you want to uh, carry it or hold it? Or how do you need to carry it or hold it? If the flashlight you want has a handle, Okay, which aspects are more important than others? Will the design of the handle on the flashlight cause user fatigue? Is it going to become uncomfortable? Should the handle be detachable? Where should the handle be located on the device? Should the handle have another function such as a hook from above or a prop on a solid surface? Okay, remember uh, guys, if you're used to working on uh, vehicles, okay, you may have some sort of a hook that goes underneath the hood of a car or a truck. Okay, that sort of thing. That's what we're talking about. Should you be able to use it uh, in a hands-free way, uh, such as mount it on your cap? And uh, we have a, re a review of a type of um, a, head, a hat mounted light on our website. Or placed on a surface and angled such that the light shines where you need for it to go. Should it be configured such as it could be hung up like a lantern? Okay, some uh, people use that inside a tent. Can't imagine using it inside a truck that way, but you never know. Okay, what size or weight restrictions do you have? For example, will you need it to fit down into something, uh, like a pen light down into a shirt pocket? And uh, you probably can't see my shirt pocket here, but obviously this, this pen light will fit down into my shirt pocket. Uh, will it fit easily into your truck's side box? What's your spending limit? In other words, how much can you spend? What's your upper limit on that? What power source should it have, including any battery or batteries, recharger, or crank handle? And this is going to be very important. If you get one of these big, fat flashlights that take an enormous 9-volt battery, one of those big, fat, square ones that's a little bit tall, and it's got these two probes up the top, okay, the, um, those could be very expensive compared to some of the other types of batteries. All right, if it's battery-powered, what type of battery does it take? And how expensive are they? Can they be recharged? And if so, how? Okay, the rechargeable uh, batteries that are in this one. Okay, this happens to be... And by the way, uh, we've noticed that there are different kinds of rechargeable batteries that are coming out now. Um, well, let me just say that the Eco brand, uh, or what they call the Eco thing, are not rechargeables. They're simply... Um, environmentally friendly I believe but anyway this is um, an energizer this is a rechargeable battery okay and it specifically says I don't know if you can read that or not but it says recharge on there okay so um, being able to find rechargeable batteries at least in our opinion where we are has become a bit more uh, challenging shall I say okay so, uh, what kind, type of bulbs do you prefer? How easily and inexpensive will it be to replace the, the light bulb? Now, the little LED bulbs generally stay cool. Some of those other bulbs, they tend to get a little warm. What kind of on-off switch should it have? And can you easily press or slide the switch in cold weather while you're wearing gloves? Should there be any auxiliary functions built in, such as a radio, a weather radio, flashing feature, red lens, etc. Must your flashlight be water resistant or waterproof? Okay, that could come in handy if you're in a rainy area of the country or in snowy territory. Is the manufacturer a specialist in flashlight manufacturing or does that matter? Okay, how rugged is it? Can it withstand the use you'll give it? Can it withstand being dropped even multiple times? And I talk about on this page, uh, Mike had one of those, I think it was like a million um, was a million candle spotlight uh, that finally gave up the ghost and we think it was because it was dropped one time too many. Okay, and what sort of uh, warranty does it have? Okay, in my opinion, if any product only has a 90-day warranty on it, run, do not walk. Okay, um, just go get yourself something else because it's probably not going to be worth the, you know, um, the money that you put down on it. Okay, so different kinds of batteries. Um, there's also the type of um, 
the battery, the uh, flashlight that has a crank handle on it, okay, that uh, basically if you wind and wind and wind and wind, it'll eventually uh, get there, okay, uh, with enough power to be able to juice. Now, we did actually purchase um, three of those a long time ago, and the, um, the, the button, if you call it a button, basically was a soft plastic over a depressing switch, a little metal thing, and basically that wore out. And the crank handle, the uh, the solenoid in that, uh, basically got so, I'm not sure if you call it uh, deteriorated, but after a while it just simply didn't uh, hold enough charge to be able to be worth anything. We ended up throwing them away. Okay, so uh, we're talking about the bulb and how important that is. And um, using your uh, flashlight like a lantern or a spotlight. Okay, and by the way, that million... Uh, candle spotlight that Mike had it was wonderful it really lit up everything all right so uh, I said even though it can be a pain to crank it sufficiently and I said that this was our favorite okay and it was I probably need to update this now but anyway um, uh, ours at the time was a crank uh, type uh, actually now ours would probably be a um, one that has rechargeable batteries in it one that we can recharge it with our own re charged batteries okay and we do have our own recharger and to be honest with you uh, for full disclosure I was extremely resistant to going towards uh, buying rechargeable batteries and a recharger okay they were more expensive and I'm like alkalines are so much less expensive let's just go ahead and stick with the alkalines and after a while it just became apparent that we were spending so much money on alkaline batteries that I just didn't want to do it anymore so um, we ended up throwing away all of our alkaline batteries after we got a sufficient supply. Now, rechargeable batteries can fail. Okay, there's something within them after a period of time. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe dropping them. Okay, um, uh, they just don't hold a charge as well. The thing about it is, you can't tell if a rechargeable battery is actually, um, you know, charging up all the way because <laughs> I haven't been able to find some sort of a thing like on the um, the Duracell. You can get the little strips that tell you whether or not how much of a charge it's got left in those batteries. So uh, I'm going to be sharing a story in just a, a couple of minutes about one type of um, uh, flashlight to avoid, and I didn't know this for a long time and ended up talking to the manufacturer about that. Uh, there was a big problem with it. But um, I'm not seeing any comments or questions, but if you have any uh, feedback for us, uh, please feel free to re respond to this video or contact us through truckdriversmoneysavingtips.com, okay? All right, so while it may be difficult to know in advance the size or brightness of a light that you'll need, don't overbuy. For example, why buy a 6.5 million candle spotlight when a 1 million or 2 million candle spotlight will work? There's no benefit in spending more if you don't need it. As a general rule, truck stop chains sell similar products within a chain. You could expect that what you find at one truck stop you'll find at another. Many truck stops sell products at a premium price. Determine what features you you like and see if you can find a similar unit at a retail store or for less. Of course, if you find a good buy at a truck stop, such as one on a super duper sale, feel free to snap that up. However, uh, investigate the reason why a unit may have a reduced price. Was it remanufactured? Has the box been badly mangled, which is evidence that the unit's been handled a lot? Okay, in addition to looking at the warranty, look for any restrictions on returns at the store where you bought your, your unit. Okay. Uh, particularly for truck stops, um, some electronics which a flashlight may or may not fit into, um, there may be a limited like a 30 or 60 or 90 day uh, return policy. So pay attention to that. Okay, after that, um, that period has ended, you will not be able to return it for a refund. Okay, it'll basically be like a doorstop. Okay, but anyway, I wanted to share with you uh, finally. Uh, a situation with a, uh, what was a nice little flashlight when I started using it and it only took one triple A rechargeable battery all right now I say it took a rechargeable battery but it actually said a triple A battery all right and so um, I noticed you know after a while that you know after I charged up this this battery and put it in there that the, the flashlight was getting hot and um, I mean, it was hot in my pocket. It was hot in my hand. I, I ended up getting to the place where I was wrapping the tail of my uh, T-shirt around the thing in order to keep from getting burned. And then I ended up uh, on a second review. I actually 
put the um, the flashlight with our candy thermometer, a little digital thermometer, to be able to check and find out how hot was this thing getting. And it got up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way under too hot to hold, in my opinion. Okay, so um, I wrote back to the manufacturer, and he said, yeah, we've re uh, redone our instructions to only use an alkaline battery on this thing. Now, that being said, since it only took one battery at a time, and this thing had a fairly bright light, okay, it would use up the, um, the, the juice, if you will, the charge in the battery on a fairly quickly quick basis, especially if you were using it. Uh, for example, I was walking our dog Shorty uh, during the, you know, the dark hours of the night or morning, and uh, the fact of the matter is, um, you know, I wanted something that I could hold in my hand very easily, put in my pocket without any problems, and I basically, you know, I, because we'd gotten rid of all our alkalines and I didn't want to go back to that, basically I ended up throwing out the, uh, throwing the thing away. I hated to do that, but the fact of the matter is, that's the way it is. Now, let me show you, I showed this to you when I did this little review. This is my, the little, um, the, um, the pocket juice mini max I showed you the other day. Okay, now this thing recharges and it also has this neat little let me see I gotta hold it down for five minutes five seconds and then it comes on okay so you can see that in five seconds and it turns back off okay so that's another uh, option that you have there when you're talking about repowering um, a light okay be able to do that through a USB port okay so that's a, that's a neat little job right there all right there are also um, certain kinds of um, flashlights that have a battery inside that you recharge it by putting it into a, an AC outlet, okay, that kind of thing. So, that being said, uh, buy your flashlight wisely. I hope that the questions that I ask will help you uh, figure out what is the best uh, type of a flashlight for you. Okay, your situation may be completely unique from anybody else's. And uh, for example, if you're going to be doing some chaining up, okay, if you're um, if you're a driver who goes through a lot of snowy and mountainous areas. One that uh, can be positioned like a lantern with a, uh, a handle underneath it to, to um, hold it at a certain angle might work better for you, but then again, uh, you determine that. Okay, this is Vicki Simons with TruckDriversMoneySavingTips.com. Please join us tomorrow night for Leadership Wednesday, and until next time, my husband Mike and I wish you safe travels and lots of money-saving opportunities on the road. Have a great night, drivers. Thanks.